Dear people of God, we warmly welcome you all in this our Eucharistic celebration. Today, the 27th of, uh, of October, we are celebrating the 30th Sunday. In ordinary time, we have be in a special way. It is our Archdiocesan Day, marking 50 years. So we give thanks to God. And in a special way, we pray for our Archbishop, and congratulate him upon the, reaching this anniversary. And we also pray for our priests, because it is also their day. And also we congratulate ourselves, because we are, it is our day, our anniversary, 58 years. Uh, today is the ninth day of the novena we take in one of St. Jude. So you can get the copies of the novena prayers as we continue to pray through his intercession. And uh, the following members have attended with special intentions, so let us join them. We have an Unciata Chonghuesi, Srivia Abenitwe, family of late Cyprian Mua Oyado, Prosi Lubowa and family, Tamba family, Agnes and family, and St. Jude Devotion. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We are the people of God that he has gathered around his holy altar. As we shall hear in the first reading, he promised to gather the people of Israel back to himself. We gather with our thoughts, our brokenness, our desires, our prayer of thanksgiving and petition. But before we can offer these prayers to you, let us first call to mind our sins and pray to the Lord for pardon. I confess to Almighty God God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. Almighty ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity. Make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this. Shout with joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of nations. Proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. See, I will bring them back from the land of the north and gather them from the far ends of the earth, all of them the blind and the lame, women with child, women in labor, a great company returning here. They had left in tears. I will comfort them as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water by a small path where they will not stumble. For I am father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn son. The word of God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy.
second reading, a reading from the letter of the Hebrews. Every high priest has been taken out of mankind and is appointed to act for men in their relations with God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. And so he can sympathize with those who are ignorant or uncertain because he too lives in the limitations of weakness. That is why he has to make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself, but each one is called by God, as Aaron was. Nor did Christ give himself the glory of becoming high priest but he had it from the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And in another text, you are a priest of the order of Melchizedek and forever. The word of the Lord. Brethren, let's raise up to welcome the gospel. disciples and a large crowd. Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting at the roadside. When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and to say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet. But he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man. Courage, they said, get up. He's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke. What do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, the blind man said, Master, let me see again. And Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. And immediately his sight was returned and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, I greet you and I welcome you to the 30th Sunday in ordinary time, year B. We thank the Lord who has kept us, who has given us life and strength, and now he has enabled us to come to praise him this morning. Today the word of the Lord tells us of the role of Jesus 
as our compassionate high priest. He tells us of the deep love God has for us and the importance of a persistent faith in our lives. The first reading from the book of Jeremiah it is set during the time when the Israelites, when the Israelites were in exile. They were facing suffering as a nation. And the Lord talks of a remnant people. We encounter a beautiful promise by God. And he says, I will gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them, the blind, the lame, the women with child, and so on. And then again he says, with weeping, they shall come, and with consolation, I will bring them back, back to their land, back to himself. This promise of the Lord gathering these people of Israel, who had lost their homeland, they had, they had lost their identity, their faith, every possession, even their sense of place with the Lord. This promise does not only apply to Israel, but it speaks to us even today. We might be experiencing suffering and despair, feeling that like these Israelites, we have lost a number of things. We are almost giving up. But the Lord invites us to come to Him. He, his love is all encompassing, especially for the suffering and those who feel lost, those who feel marginalized. How good or comforting it is to know that the Lord is always with us, that He knows our suffering, that He knows our pain, He knows our struggles. Jeremiah is reminding us that God does not abandon his people in their brokenness. No matter the death of our suffering, of all our, all our separation from him, his desire is to bring us back to himself, back to his love and his mercy. The second reading from the letter to the Hebrews reminds us of that unique role of Jesus as the eternal high priest. Here we learn that every high priest is chosen to act on behalf of the people offering gifts and sacrifices for sins. Jesus fulfills this prophecy. He offers the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And he's more than a high priest. He is one who knows, who has shared our human experience. The writer tells us that he can empathize with us. Why? Because just as we go through trials, he also was tried. This means that we can approach him with confidence, knowing that he knows our suffering, he knows what we go through. He understands our pain and our struggles so we can find solace in his presence. The Gospel from Mark gives us that beautiful story of Bartimaeus, that blind man, sitting by the roadside. And he hears that the Lord is passing by. And we've heard Bartimaeus crying, Son of David, have mercy on me. And then there are these others who are trying to silence him. How admirable that you know faith is. He goes on, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We've heard Jesus heard him, he stopped and called him. And he asks him, what do you want me to do for you? A very important question, even for us. What do you want me to do for you? We've heard, but now saying, Rabbi, I want to see. And Jesus restores his sight and tells him, Your faith, your faith 
as he do. Brothers and sisters, this teaches us the value of a persistent faith in our lives. We need that courage always to hold on to what we desire, for what we are looking for. Many times we find situations and people whose words tend to weigh us down, telling us, keep quiet, you cannot go there, don't do that, you cannot get that, you cannot reach there. Those naysayers. But he never teaches us that in life, in whatever we desire to wish to, we need to hold on. We need to persist. In fact, not only in this life, but even to reach the eternal life, the goal of eternal life, we have to persist on this journey. There are those who will tell you, keep quiet. We see them when we realize that these are obstacles. Let us persist on. Let us cry to Jesus in all our needs, in loving trust that he will respond at his own time. And for Bartimaeus, even though he did not see, he had those eyes of faith that were able to recognize that Jesus is Christ. And they were able to give him that trust that Jesus will restore his sight. That was a big faith. He teaches us that to truly see, it is not about the physical sight. It's about opening our hearts to Jesus, who is passing us by and calling on to him. And after, when he heals us, when we encounter him, let us follow him on that path of discipleship. We have that. But he knows follow Christ immediately. He went on with him. Let us pray, dear friends, that Jesus, our eternal high priest, the one who gathers us, who gathers us in our brokenness, and now he gathers us around his altar to share his body and blood, may give us the grace, the faith, and the courage we need especially in times of need, to call on to him and to trust in his response. And together let us pray that, Lord, may we receive our sight, may we see you in our lives, and may we trust in your love. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God.
We are the people the Lord has sent and gathers us around his altar today as we follow him along his way of faith. Let us lift up our hearts to him, our Father, in prayer. For the bishops and the priests who preach and lead God's people, let us pray to the Lord. For ways and responsible judges who administer the, the laws of our nation, let us pray to the Lord. For people suffering from failing eyesight and blindness, let us pray to the Lord. For joyous fight in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who sleep in Christ, especially our battered relatives and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord As we celebrate our today's day, that we continue, that we continue to sustain a sinful lifestyle in every way, as a saint of the core responsibility promoting the persuasion, communion and mission shared among the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us in silence present our petitions to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord gracious Hail Mary. Father, we lift our hearts to you in humble supplication. So we prepare to return to you our love and gratitude in the Eucharist. For your Son, our eternal priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. My new seat and offer to God what has blessed us with this week. Then later we shall have the second collection in support of KLT.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offering we make to your majesty, and whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of passion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of, he of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the seven passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of the judge, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs. St. Charles Ruanda, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Paul Simogri, our bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you obtain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Father Wycliffe the Ambition, whom you called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up in flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your children. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When you wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be with you, we shall be like you for all ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God, the whole him who takes all the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, may one day, we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. We are going to recite the Novena of St. George. O Lord Jesus Christ, who went on earth offered our prayers and supplications to your Father with a strong cry and tears, received the offerings of this novena, during which we desire to join our prayers with yours. We make this offering through Mary, your mother, Saint Jude Tadeus, your cousin, for he is our helper in difficult cases. For their sakes, accept and grant our prayer. Amen. O glorious apostle Saint Jude Tadeus, the consent of hopeless cases, who when called by Jesus Christ, left everything and followed him, obtained for us the grace to detach ourselves from all our real tragedies to serve God and love our neighbor as you love ourselves. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hey Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O faithful apostle Saint Jude, the life cousin of our Savior. We admire the courage in which you spread the gospel with great labors and sacrifices. Assist us so that we may practice daily by word and deed our faith. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, and your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O zealous apostle Saint Jude, who crowned you after life by martyrdom. To give a true testimony in your faith. Pray for us that we may imitate you in your great endurance, strengthen our weakness in time of temptation, and help us to persevere in our faith, so that with you one day we may come to glorify God forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Pray for us, O blessed Saint Jude. Let us pray. Father, you reveal yourself to us through the preachings of your apostles and Jews. By his prayers, give the church continued growth 
and in his name of God's life. Grant this to us, our Lord. May we sit for a short time for having led us in this mass. Father, thank you so much. And we also inspire for meeting our Toyo team and the Women's Guild, our ushers, our lectors, St. Jude Devotion, and the, the School for the Day. Thanks so much for your participation at this mass. Uh, as we all know, these days we have our second collection to continue supporting KLT project. This is the time I request Father Bruno and Father Joseph to come down there. We collect our second collection for KLT as it will slowly be going through this church in Lot 6. God is good. And all the time. I got the energy to say something else. God is good. And all the time. Now can you feel the energy? What a beautiful people you are. Thank you for showing God that love. My name is Julius Mokasa Mugambwa. I am the Sala of Ubuka of our parish. I have some good information for you. It's good for myself and everyone. I will start it with a question. Can you look at your neighbor and imagine what they do? Just look at your neighbor, the person sitting next to you. Do you have an idea of what they do? Hey, hey. She's a lawyer, a teacher, a farmer, whatever they might be. Now, if you cannot answer that question, we want you to be able to answer that question. Why? Because we have resources in our parish, but we have not harnessed all of them. I stand here on behalf of the executive of our parish to let you know about our upcoming business expo. We've organized the Business Expo on November 24th. So, if you're out there and you are a real estate developer, you're a financial advisor, you're a medical consultant, a teacher, a business person, whatever you do, we don't want this situation of, you know, running around the city looking for a service, looking for a product that actually your fellow parishioner can offer. Some of you have been up and down, go to the first floor, to the second, get in the elevator, looking for this consultant, and guess this person you've been looking for all these months at the Cancer Institute, at the Heart Institute, at King's College, Bordeaux, at Kaya, wherever. Come here, you pray with this person and you say, hey, you've been looking for me. So we've created this business expo for all of you, for all of us, choir members. Yes, you sing together. We want you to know what your colleagues do so that you can support them. Sit it there. We want you to know who the person you sit with every day and celebrate mass with does. That business expo has different rates that we've put but we are not necessarily looking at how much you're going to spend. We want this platform to break the ice. Don't be there saying, I don't sell anything. You could be the key to someone's big opportunity, but also someone else might be the key to the opportunity of someone you know. That is why I want to invite you. Now, that is one piece of information. The last one the parish day. 
December 15th. We organize in the parish there, and some of you are already aware because many announcements have been made. Now I want to invite you on one of the major highlights of the day's celebration. We are publishing a magazine, a souvenir magazine. In the past, we've published other magazines, amazing quality, beautiful photography, very captivating storytelling. And you have stories of our parish for the last 10 years. I'm inviting you, bring those stories to me. I've been chosen to be on the team to make the parish magazine. Bring those stories, but also the business community. Bring your businesses and buy space to advertise. The magazine becomes cheaper the more we have advertisers. In the past, we've sold it 10,000. We can actually sell it as low as 3,000. If you have advertisers from your companies, from your organizations, from your different areas of subscription, please come and advertise with us. So from here, I'm going to the tent with my colleagues. Come and ask whatever you want to know about the business expo. Do not judge your business for being very small. Do not judge your career for being at the beginning. Yes, there could be someone now to elevate it. Do not judge it to be in retirement. You could be the one to elevate others. I wish you a very beautiful Sunday and happy Archdiocesan Day. See you in the tent. Thank you, Judas Mgamba, with that kind of information. Kindly friend him at the tent for those two purposes, the Expo and the Parish Magazine. We have celebrated the 30 Sunday on our team, Seiko B, and we thank you for your active participation. And for the second collection, you've just made for KLT. We shall have prayers of healing and deliverance today Sunday at 3 p.m. and conclude with Mass at 5 p.m. The prayers will be held by Father not Vashavar. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we shall have other catechesis on Tuesday, that's after tomorrow, at 6 p.m. and the theme is family planning and the church's teaching. We are all invited. We shall also be on Zoom. We shall have, uh, we thank the St. Matia Mulumba community members for leading the evening adoration last Thursday. Next Thursday this week, the Youth for Christ will lead the adoration and the solemn rosary at 5 p.m. Please kindly of turn up. Uh, it will be Paralita J, Adoration and the Solemn Rosary together as we conclude this month of October and Thursday. We start at 5 p.m. Inform others. Next Friday, 1st November, we shall celebrate the solemnity of all saints with three masses 7 o'clock, 1 p.m., and 6 p.m. The Sacred Heart of Jesus also will begin with devotional prayers, confessions, and exposition of the Blessed Sacrament at 5 o'clock. Then together we crown it with the Mass at 6. Remember, it is a day of obligation. We treat the church to sit as a Sunday. Uh, on Saturday, 2nd November, will be the commemoration of all faithful departed. We shall have Masses at 7 o'clock, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Note this, Saturday, commemoration of All Souls Day, Mass will be at 7 a.m., 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. In the evening, the five thirty Mass will be Sunday and special. Inform others and friend these announcements at the next event. Next Sunday will be third Sunday. We are reminded to take our faith envelopes and bring them back on Sunday for the second collection. Other announcements, kindly friend them at the notes board, including the sense of the week. Father Ronald Chamber Day, 
will be with us today from 3 p.m. I now invite Mrs. Jane Kaye, who is celebrating her birthday today, to come forward here and receive your birthday blessing from Father. shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace.